I've been researching travelers' notebook setups to get a good idea of what is available online. I was originally looking for some inspiration for my own journal because I have decided that my next bullet journal will be in a traveler's company insert instead of a conventional notebook. However, I couldn't really find what I was looking for. I found plenty of unboxing videos, plenty of videos showing people's setups, like which inserts they use, what they keep in their traveler's notebooks, and also sort of plan with me videos, except they're all either people putting stickers into the pre-made traveler's company calendar insert, or writing and decorating their diary spreads. And there were lots of good videos for this, but it wasn't exactly what I was looking for. So I thought, well, if it's not there, then I should create it, because I cannot be the only person in the world who is searching for this. So in this video, I will set up my new bullet journal. My Nuna M will be full by the end of October and I don't want to risk being without a proper journal when November starts because that month is going to be really busy for me. So I'm setting up this one rather early. And yes, I'm starting a new journal in November. Like come on guys, the year is far from over and there's no reason to wait for the new year. Fun fact, the only time I started a new journal in January, I ended up throwing it away after 6 weeks. Not because it started in January, but because it wasn't right for me. But I still might be cursed, so better not risk it. All jokes aside, there really is no reason to start your journal in January unless your journal is full in December. The reason we feel like we have to start in January is because of socially constructed ideas of months and when the year starts. So don't limit yourself because of a social construct. And don't come at me with that, oh but my perfectionism won't let me do this nonsense unless you've actually been diagnosed with such a diagnosis. We all want our things to look pretty. It's not like I don't care about that. I care a lot, probably too much. But I don't tell myself I can't make a new journal because it won't be perfect. Oh, it is perfect. And if you did not get that reference, you need to go watch The Good Place. Anyway, rant over. I've used many kinds of notebooks since I started bullet journaling, and I think the best part about starting a new journal is being able to try something new. I already used the Traveler's Company inserts for my travel journal and my sketchbook, among other things, so I figured I might as well try using it as my main journal as well. I got a few different inserts to try to figure out what would work best for me, and I landed on using two inserts for my bullet journal. One for all the yearly spreads, trackers, and collections, and one for the monthly planning. I figured that since the inserts are pretty thin, this way I can switch out the monthly inserts whenever I run out of pages, but I won't have to recreate all the yearly spreads from scratch every couple of months. I will be setting up my November spreads later in October, but in this video I'll set up my general spreads insert. In a way, these spreads are more intimidating because you have to look at them for a long time. Therefore, I decided to go for a minimal approach. These spreads are all very general spreads that will be added to bit by bit while I use the journal, so I want to give myself as much space and as little limitation as possible. I never know what to put on the first page of a new journal. In my last journal I put a sticker, and in this new one I kind of had two first pages to deal with, so I did a sticker of Walter on the first page and a fitting quote on the other page. It says, the best time for new beginnings is now. I'm using three Crayola Super Tips as my very simple color scheme for this journal. There is a beige, a reddish beige, and a brown. Since they're not numbered, I can't tell you which ones they are. Don't worry, I'll come back to the index at the end. Here I am setting up my future log. I'm not sure how long I will use this journal as my bullet journal, so I decided to just set up a year in my future log just in case. This layout is super simple, but I think it looks very nice with the months on top, and then I wrote out all the calendars, which took forever, and I also added the week numbers in a sepia fine liner. I'll be setting up the rest of the future log off camera because you don't have to watch me do it three times. The next few spreads are going to be my finances spread, so I wasn't sure how to do this at first, but in the end I ended up with spreads for both 2019 and 2020, and this way I can kind of compare the two years and it's all in the same journal. This is a graph of my account balance for my four bank accounts. Obviously I will not be filling this in on camera because this is very sensitive information, but I thought I would show you the graph anyway, and the y-axis is going to be amount of money. 
So I'm gonna set up the graph for 2020 off camera and then move on to my income spread. So I have one for 2019 on the left side and one for 2020 on the right side. This year I have had four sources of income which is symbolized by these four boxes where I will put in the amount for each month and then the total and then on the right side of course I don't yet know what kind of income I will have next year but hopefully I'll be able to get a job when I complete my master's degree. So for now I'm just making two boxes for kind of the regular income I will have this winter and uh, that's it. Now moving on to the next spreads, these are for my expenses and this might look like a lot of work for very little but it has worked for me so far in my current journal so I'm going to do it again. Basically there is one box for each expense. So I have one for rent, electricity, internet, phone, etc. And then stuff like groceries and shopping and travel and whatnot. And I'm using these really cute Japanese demon washi tapes that I got in Japan. They're so cute and I haven't really been able to use them that much because they never really fit my theme. But because there isn't really a theme for these spreads, I figured this is the right time. Next up is my period tracker and this is pretty self-explanatory. It took forever to write all the dots but I don't regret it because I think it looks really cool. But yeah, this is probably the longest clip I had to edit because there were so many dots. So I have three columns in my period tracker. So I have one for 2020, one for 2019 and then the last four months of 2018. I kind of like having all of it in the same spread which is why I included 2018 and all of 2019 as well because then it's so much easier to see the pattern if you have it all in front of you. I also included a strip of washi tape for decoration and uh, that's pretty much it. Moving on to the next spread, this is going to be my movies tracker. Right now it's super simple and the idea is that I will fill each box with the name of the movie and the date that I watched it. Maybe I'll even draw something, who knows? I added some drop shadows later because it looked really naked and plain. The next spread is going to be my series tracker and I did set aside a double spread for this because I do watch a lot of TV shows, probably too many. So this is just going to be the header and then underneath I have two columns, one for the title of the series and then another column that is a bit wider for the episodes. So I just put a ring around each number when I've watched that episode and that's how I keep track of where I am in TV series. After the series tracker is my book tracker and this will be very similar to the one I already have in my journal because I really like that setup. So I'm making the same spread but without the bookshelf because I don't have a printer right now and it's very annoying having to print the covers of books when I have to go to my parents house to print it. So. I've already added two books to the spread because I just barely started reading them and I think it'll take me more than a month to get through both of them, so. Each square represents a chapter and I'll fill in the square when I finish the chapter, so really it's super simple. The last spread I'll be making today is a collection spread for articles I'm reading. I am writing my master's thesis this year and I decided it would be nice to have a place where I can kind of collect all of the articles that I'm reading and I'm also curious to see how many pages I'll read this year. I've never done a tracker like this before so it's gonna be fun to see if it works. So in the left column I write the title and the author of the article and then in the right column I write keywords from that article. And I hope that this spread will make it easier for me to go back to an article just by looking at the keywords so I kind of know where to go. And now I'm going back to my index to fill it in. These inserts are not numbered, so I numbered them myself and filled in the index accordingly. I used the same Crayola Super Tips as before to add some color, and I also went back to some of the other spreads to add the same color. If you're like me and have been looking for a proper Traveler's Notebook bullet journal setup video for a while, I hope this video is what you are looking for. And if you don't use a Traveler's Notebook, but rather a normal notebook, I still hope you found this video interesting, and maybe you'll be able to use some of these layouts in your own journal.
Let me know in the comments what kind of spreads you normally put in the beginning of your journal. As always, click the subscribe button to see more of my content and go follow me on Instagram to see these spreads filled in. All the links to my social media and the music I use in this video is in the description box below. I hope you enjoyed this video because I had a lot of fun making it and I'm so happy to finally have my very own traveler's notebook bullet journal. And I hope you stick around for the final flip through. And remember, your journal does not have to start in January. The best time for new beginnings is now. I hope you're having a lovely day and I'll see you next time. Bye! I'm gonna make mistakes.